Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson 17. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue practicing uh, adding two two-digit numbers with some borrowing, or not, uh, carrying, like in the traditional way we'd say carrying. Um, but we're still not quite doing that standard algorithm. Uh, we're beginning with the picture. We're drawing the quick tens. We're starting with the picture, making sure we understand the picture, and then we're connecting that visual representation to the standard algorithm. So students will be doing the standard algorithm. They're just, not, at this point, not expected to start with the standard algorithm. They're starting with the drawing. Now, parents and teachers, some of your students may need to be differentiated. Some students may need to start with the visual, the picture. Some may even need to go backwards further and use base 10 blocks. Um, and then while other students might be ready to start with the algorithm and then verify their findings with the picture or with the base 10 blocks. So this is a period of great time, of uh, an opportunity for the teachers to really differentiate and meet the needs of all of our students. So let's get started. So really in a nutshell though, this lesson is exactly the same as the previous lesson, it's just more practice. So we're gonna begin with, oh, let's say 49 plus 33. So we're gonna begin by modeling 49. So it's four tens and nine ones, keeping in mind, uh, quick tens, and then I'm, I'm arranging the, the ones in a 10 frame, in, in five groups, right? Kind of like a 10 frame. And then 33 is, of course, three tens plus three ones, and now we're going to add. And the idea is, of course, <clears throat> well, we've got nine up here, so we're going to add one more down here, and that creates a 10. <clears throat> so how many tens do we have? Well, we have these four plus these three, so that's seven, plus this extra ten, so that gives us eight tens, and of course we have two ones left over, so the answer is 82. Now how are we going to connect that to the standard algorithm? Well, let's write it down vertically, 49 plus 33. And the idea would be, well, if we add our ones together, nine ones plus three ones, how many ones are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 12 ones because we can see it right here. Nine plus one is 10 plus two more. There's our 12. So we've got 12. Well, what does that mean? Well, we can, let's see, I'm going to grab my blue pen, and we could say, well, that's this. And what, is, <laughs> what does this mean? It means... 9 plus 3 is 12 ones, which means we have an extra 10 plus 2 ones left over. So we have a 10 plus 2 ones left over. 9 plus 3 is 12. Here's our 10 plus 2 left over, and we can see it right here. Here's our 10 plus 2 left over. Now we're going to add up all of our 10s, and of course we get 8 because 4 10s plus 3 10s plus the new one gives us 8, and we can see that here. 4 plus 3 plus the new one is 8. So parents and teachers, notice how I'm going back and forth. Um, starting with the visual, and I'm moving towards the abstract, but I'm going backwards to make sure we understand why the abstract makes sense. Um, <clears throat> parents and teachers, you're really going to have to be really nuanced and sophisticated and, and recognize where the student is in the progression of pictorial to abstract and really um, respond to the student as wherever the student is. If the student is ready to start with the abstract and verify by doing a pictorial, great. Some students, however, may need to start with a pictorial still and then use that as the launching pad towards doing the abstract. So you're really going to have to individualize a whole lot with your students because they're going to be all on a different uh, place in this progression. Uh, so now, that's essentially it. It's more of the same as yesterday. Uh, if we look at 27 plus 67, I'll make this one quick. So 27 plus 67, well, that's two tens plus seven ones, and six tens plus seven ones, and the one thing I don't like, the way I just did it right here, is I don't like the fact that 
the ones are not exactly lined up on top of each other. So what we really, really want, <clears throat> and I don't know how to delete this. Let's see if I can figure out how to delete this. There we go. Uh, what we're going to do is I really want to make sure my t ones and tens are lined up because I want two, three, four, five, six. I really want to establish good um, habits right from the get-go where our ones and our tens are lined up. Now I'm happy. Now this makes me happy. And I see that we have, let's see, five down here plus five down here. So that gives us 10. Plus we got two and two is four. So we see that we're going to have four ones left over. And how many tens are we going to have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus this new one. So that gives us nine tens left over. So, of course, our answer is 94. And if we're going to record that using that standard algorithm, we're going to see that 7 plus 7 is 14. So that 14, and if you need students, if they kind of need to see it, I don't know where you would write it. Uh, you could say, well, don't forget, what is a 14? That 14 is really a 10 plus a 4. All right, that's what the 14 means. So that means <clears throat> we're going to have four ones left over, and we're going to have one additional 10 in the tens column. And we can see that here. Here's the four left over, and this group of 10 is an additional 10. So we now have nine tens. <clears throat> So our answer is 94, and we can see it both in the abstract, and we can see how the abstract is connected to the pictorial. This problem, this page, is just more of this, whoa, <laughs> this is just more of the same. The idea is using quick tens, connecting that pictorial representation to the standard algorithm, pa parents and teachers, Pay attention to your students and whether you're ready or they are ready to take away that training wheels and go straight to that standard algorithm. Because I'm sure by now some students are wanting to do that. And if they're ready, let them go ahead and do that. And that wraps up more of the that continuing tr journey towards the standard algorithm. This was first grade, module 6, lesson 17. We're adding... But we're still using a drawing, but we're getting super close to having our students move straight to that standard algorithm. By the way, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it.